a lot of people will feel like they're funny, mm. but they're scared to upload themselves online. Mm. Literally, based on what you said, like they don't want to feel a little bit silly. Or yeah, some yeah. people have a business or have a job. They're working in the city and they yeah. feel like, how can I do comedy online? What, what What do you say to people like that? Do you feel like it's still worth taking the risk or? I mean, yeah, just do it. Like, my thing is, is that you just have to post. Like, I know a lot of people there can be like, you know, you can be a bit of a perfectionist and it's like, oh, it has to look like this, it has to look like that. But I just feel like a lot of the things that we do, we don't know how it's going to be until we just do it. Mm. You can put it on paper and you can brief yourself from here till morning, night, whatever, until you actually do it. You just, you're just going to, you're not going to know. Guys, welcome to the Brand About Podcast. You're here with myself, Tayo, my co-host. I mean, Iman. Come on, we got a special, special guest for you in the building. Today, we got Miss Rita B in the building. Hi. Welcome, welcome, I'm welcome. Supposed to say hi. Okay. Yeah, yeah, say hi, okay. say hi, say hi. <laughs> but you know, I'm gonna let you introduce yourself because every guest we ask them, what is your bread and butter? So, can you let the people know what's your bread and butter? Ah, huh. um, I'm a podcaster. Wicked. But that's not even my bread and butter because I feel like that's a passion project. It's all of it, it's all of it, it's all of it. Add it, add it, add it. But okay, I'm a podcaster, I'm a content creator. Um, I guess, yeah, just overall, I'm just like an entertainer, I guess, would be the right way to describe it. And and, and enjoyment ambassador. Enjoyment ambassador, yeah. Yeah, I like that name actually. Yeah, enjoyment and it's, ambassador. It's, 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 it's natural as well because, you know what's funny? I actually didn't know that you were Nigerian before you did the 90s Babies podcast. Really? I didn't know what I thought you were. I, I, I thought you were funny. <laughs> but like, not that. But I didn't know you were. I didn't know that the the B at the end of Misery and B stood for Balogun. Yes, <laughs> Big B. Yeah, <laughs> Balogun. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. yeah, talk to us about your journey in content creation. Tell them a bit about your podcast and what you do. Wow, right into it. Uh, journey of content creation. Do you mean like how did I get started? Yeah, it was actually by accident. So I have an acting background, but. As I was like training to be like an actor and stuff like that, I also had a hair salon. So there was just something like that was a little bit quote unquote cringy about making funny videos online when I'm trying to be like a quote unquote girl boss. Do you know what I mean? So with the salon, I just couldn't really show, I couldn't do content for myself. It was all about doing content for the salon, the business, mm. blah, 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 blah. But deep down in my soul, I would see people on like Vine and stuff and I'll be thinking that could be funny as well. Like that could be cool, but I just never did it. I just didn't do it. I was just very much on the business side of things and, and would only show like acting stuff if I was acting because it just felt more secure. Like, oh, I've got a script. So if I'm being silly, it's because of a script, not because Rita's being silly. Do you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Yeah, um, but then the pandemic happened and then I was like, okay, this is my chance to really give this a little, you know, because everyone's doing stuff. And I thought to myself, you know what? If I come across as silly, I could just say it was the pandemic. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> like, you got COVID. So. Yeah. Like, yeah. I don't have to, you know what I'm saying? Like, Everything's going bad anyway. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, do you know what I mean? But surprisingly, you know, I started doing little videos here and there, just like everyone else was. And people were like latching onto it. People were really liking it. I started going viral, but at the time I didn't even know it was viral. Like I would go viral on my TikTok and then not log on for two weeks and not even realize that mm -hmm. I had gone like viral because I was still shy to put it on IG. There's something yeah. about IG that makes it feel a bit more, it's people that know you in it. So like yeah. you don't want to post or whatever. I mean, it's funny, I know exactly what you're talking <laughs> about. Right? TikTok's yeah. kind of like, I just throw it out there. Yeah, I wouldn't even go back, I wouldn't log back in until it's time to upload yeah. basically. But IG's like, it feels like a community. Yeah. Like. yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, I just started posting people were like getting into it obviously started growing and stuff um and yeah i just i've just been doing it ever since really i, I want to ask you something because a lot of people um do believe they're funny like i believe i'm funny in it and iman's very very funny in it I, I used to be funny in it but i i'm still kind of funny but you gotta give me time in it <laughs> yeah, yeah, but a lot of people it's got marinate you're absolutely right mm. a lot of people will feel like they're funny mm. but they're scared to upload themselves online mm. literally based on what you said, like they don't want to feel a little bit silly or yeah, yeah. some people have a business or have a job. They're working in the city and they yeah, feel like, how can I do comedy online? What, what what do you say to people like that? Do you feel like it's still worth taking the risk or? I mean, yeah, just do it. Like my thing is, is that you just have to post. Like I know a lot of people there can be like, you know, you can be a bit of a perfectionist and it's like, oh, it has to look like this. It has to look like that. But I just feel like a lot of the things that we do, we don't know how it's going to be until we just do it. Mm. You can put it on paper and you can brief yourself from here till morning, night, whatever, until you actually do it, you just you're just gonna you're not gonna know. And I've posted some videos that got crickets. Do you know what I mean? People didn't th think it was funny, and I just thought it was just you know, I thought you know maybe 
the algorithm or this, that, that. So I even re-upload it and it's still not getting the hits. <laughs> so the I'm re-upload like, is always worse, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, So I'm like, all right, cool. You know, the, the joke didn't land. But I feel like if you want to do it, I don't see like, why not? Just just do it, innit? Like, if people think you're funny, they think you're funny. If they don't, then maybe, you know. Yeah. And, and sometimes you need to go through it where you upload those ones that don't hit because that's going to allow you to be more of a risk taker, allow 100%. you to try more new things, try yeah, and yeah, assess yeah. what needs adjusting and so on and so yeah, forth, yeah, basically. Yeah, yeah. Um, Being a full-time content creator is something that five years ago, six years ago, seven years ago, mm. people thought, was kind of like a, it wasn't a real thing. Mm. Would you say that it definitely is now? Like it's something that you can earn a living off of basically. And obviously you're you're, you're blatantly doing it, but yeah. I'm just saying that for people that are trying to step into that space, would you say that there's still space? 100%, 100%. I feel like people love to do this thing where they're like, oh, influence and it's going to end soon. Da, 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 da. Oh, it's not a real thing. Oh my, it's real. <laughs> it's actually a real, real thing. And I think what's really beautiful about I guess the space of influencing, like I wouldn't call myself an influencer per se. I feel like I'm more a content creator, but there's always space. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Because, you know, I have friends who have been creating content for like 10 years or over 10 years. And it would have been easy for me to be like, oh, I can't get into that space because they've been doing it for so long. Like, what do I know? Like, da, 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 da. But now I'm also doing it full time. So I've caught up. Do you know what I mean? It's still not on their level because, you know, they've, you know, their numbers are completely different. But I just entered and with consistency, yeah, it's, it's still clicking and I'm able to do it full time. So I, I feel like there's always space for it if it's something that you actually you actually want to do. Do you yeah. know what I mean? I don't think it's for everyone. I think there's a lot of times where like, my account was literally like very close to zero. I said, God, you can't let me go out like this. <laughs> you have to provide. Do you know what I mean? Genuinely, I'd be like, you ha I, I used to have this thing where every time I'd be walking, I'd be like, God will never let me touch zero. God will never <laughs> let me touch zero. And then something random will come in. Like it might, it would be like even 300 pounds. It's like, oh, can you post this on your story? 300 pounds. I'm like, oh, thank God I didn't touch zero. So you're going to have those times where you're not making money because essentially you're waiting for a brand to be like, hey, we want to work with you and then pay you, but the brand might not come. Do you know what I mean? So you have to, I guess, anticipate that as well. Absolutely. And I, I guess there's things that you can do to kind of like position yourself so more brands find you attractive as well. Yeah. It? And, and I think that one thing that a lot of people overlook is that um, these are like the principles of running any business, really. Do you know what I'm trying to say? You've mm -hmm. kind of got to win your business. You've got to seem more attractive. You've got to align yourself with what the brand's values are so they see that mm -hmm. you're well position to market whatever they're looking to market effectively yeah exactly i want to go back a little bit to girl boss <laughs> that right. makes me feel yeah <laughs> so you had a hair salon what did you do yeah, before yeah. that because i guess um i guess for a lot of our parents right they, they like the whole idea of uh go to uni have a career mm. do this do that so We'll get on to becoming a content creator after, but before that, even entrepreneurship is not something yeah. that they're all uh, super um, comfortable with. <sighs> My parents are the opposite. Is it? I would say, yeah, complete opposite. Um, I didn't go to uni. I went to New York. I studied in New York for two and a half years. So I moved to New York when I was like 17, about to turn 18. Do you feel, just before you move on, do you feel like you picked up anything from New York that serves you today? To be honest, you know, people say everything happens for a reason and a full circle moment. My full circle moment actually hasn't come because I actually don't know why I went to New York. Mm. I really, it was such a, it was such an impulsive decision. Like I just remember I just wanted to be an actor. I remember I was in Croydon College and they were making me do everything but act. And I remember there was a job I really wanted and I got rejected and I just came home and I was like, I want to study acting. And I saw this scholarship in New York and I just basically went. And how I got my parents on board I have no idea, but they just supported me. And that same year, I think I applied in March. And then by July, I was living in New York. It was really <laughs> insane, really, really insane. But I've met amazing friends who I'm still friends with now. But also I think it did give me a, a, a very strong sense of independence early on. Cause obviously yeah. I'm living there. I don't have any family in New York, nothing. I'm having to like learn this whole new culture and, you know, drama school is very, very intense. I can imagine. So dealing with that was like a lot. You know, your teacher will look you dead in your eye and tell you you are shit. Do you know what I mean? And you mm. just have to be like, okay, I'm going to do better. I'm going to do better. <laughs> do you know what I mean? So it was very, very intense. So I feel like, I guess it was like boot camp to adulthood, yeah, essentially. Yeah, yeah. Um, 
but I haven't had like, you know, me hear those stories and it's like this full circle moment. It's like, oh my God, because I met this person in New York when I was 17 and now I've met them and now they've made me a star. Do you know what I mean? I'm waiting yeah, for that yeah, click, yeah, yeah. but that click hasn't happened yet. But um, yeah, my parents are very like, my dad's always been in business and my, so is my mom. So my dad's always wanted us to go the being an entrepreneur route okay. because he's felt like, you know, he's, he was thinking about our future in, in a sense of like having control of your time. So yeah. he's like, when you have kids, you don't have to worry about getting annual leave and da, 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 da. you want to travel, you can just travel. So he's always going that route of like, be free, do what you want to do, da, 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 da. My mom started the salon. And when I came back from New York, I thought I was going to be an immediate Hollywood star. So it was a real shock when <laughs> I wasn't booking jobs because I was like, I studied in New York. I don't understand <laughs> what's going on. Do you know what I mean? So I used to go from being really high in excitement every time I'd get an audition. And then I'll go from being really high, close to booking a job, sometimes not even close. And then my emotions going all the way to the floor when I don't get the job. So it was very like high up, high, high up and up and down, up and down, up and down. Mm. And my dad was like, listen, look, you can't be living your life like this. Like, there's no way that you can think. Like, God gave you two hands, he gave you two feet. You can't think that he's only gonna give you one talent. So you need to kind of figure out a way to like do other things, but also it can still lead you to what you actually wanna do. And that's how he finessed me into working at the salon. <laughs> and I was meant to be there part-time. Do you know what I mean? I was meant to be a project manager, just part-time. And essentially at 21, I ended up actually owning a salon <laughs> because my mom stopped working there. My dad wasn't really involved. So me and my best friend at the time, we were like these two young babes running this full blown salon, having this vision for it. And I mean, we were the first of our kind at the time. It was very iconic. We were the first to do a lot of things. And yeah, for 10 years, yeah, I was the owner of a salon. And crazy. I was like, wow, you finessed me good. Like, like yeah, it's crazy. Why did you come back from New York? Because you good acted question. there. Yeah. You've been there. You've been around there. Your connections are there. Mm. You've learned acting there. Mm -hmm. For black people, there's more opportunity in America than it is in the UK. Yeah. Why did you come back? Do you know what? Yeah. I was so... I'm very in touch with my emotions. I'm a very, very self-aware person. So when I was in New York, I felt that I wasn't grounded. So mm. I just kept feeling this thing of like, I felt like I was like losing a sense of self. And it's really odd for like a teen to be thinking that and to feel those things. Cause I'm like, in hindsight, I'm like, you should have just gotten over it because you really could have been in LA or whatever. But I think there was just this thing in me where I was like, I need to come to London for a bit to reground myself. Like I need to be around my family. I need mm. to be around my friends. It just felt like this world of like people that I did, I knew, but at the same time I didn't. It just kind of, I just felt very unbalanced. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So I was like, let me come back to London. And the, the plan was like, be in London for a little bit and then go back essentially. Yeah. But I just went back, I didn't go back. London's like, got this way of holding holding you. Yeah, I don't know what happened. I didn't go back. Like I went, I've, I've gone back to like visit and stuff, but yeah, I've never lived there again. Since. Okay. Have you thought about going back? Because like Iman said, like I think uh, especially in the media, media space, the acting space, mm -hmm. especially as a Brit as well. Yeah. Yeah. And, and also, I just wanted to ask regarding your audience. Do you find that a lot of your audience are Americans or a decent amount? Quite a decent amount, actually. Like it's quite mixed. Yeah, it's quite mixed, oddly. They, know, they don't really get my humour, so I don't really know why it's so mixed. <laughs> <laughs> but it is quite mixed, actually. Um, I've, I've thought about moving back. I mean, if the opportunity presented itself, I wouldn't be, like, completely against it. But mm. I think what's great about our time now is that, I mean, back then, you had to be living in America mm. to get certain opportunities, you know what I mean? Even, like, auditions, you had to literally be there. But I have so many friends who have booked, like, major projects and didn't step foot in America before they booked that job because everything's very much like send it on send, send it. it send tape send a tape so I feel like I don't necessarily have to be there but I can imagine being there will also create even more opportunities of but course. I mean who knows we don't know what the future holds in it if it if it happens maybe one day it happens or maybe not I don't know so talk to a lot of people will talk about business. So you ran this business. Mm -hmm. I guess it already had customers and clients and a brand and a, you already had a shop. You, it already had presence, but you took it over. What mm. are some of the lessons? Because I guess there's always different options, right? You can start a business or you could buy somebody else's existing business and then carry on from there. 
what are the less kind of key lessons that you learned running a business that you think is the difference between running a business successfully and unsuccessfully? Um, I would say because at the time when I took over the business, it had presence, but it was more so like high street presence. Mm. Like back then, it was one of those things, stylists will go in and you don't know if you're gonna get any customers. Do you know what I mean? You just hope you get customers mm. by people who are just walking by. It's not like how it was now. So I think one of the, the first things was essentially like creating that presence, like online bookings and just a lot of firsts. But I'd say like, what did I learn from running it successfully and then essentially not? Um, it's so hard to answer this year because I feel like I have not thought about the salon in so long oh. <laughs> because it was just such a, stressful experience i kind of was like ah, i'm done with you after i sold it but i think what was it that made it successful i feel like we were just very innovative in it innovative english yeah, 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 yeah. innovative yeah <laughs> um and took a lot of risks yeah you know took a lot of risks and like didn't look at just our sector and like this is how people hair salons do things a lot of our marketing came from clothing brands so at the time like pretty little thing was coming up all of that stuff pretty little thing misguided and we were like okay cool what is it about their campaigns that makes sense and we're like let's apply that to hair and it was like trying to build out what this brand is so the salon was called radiant and we were like okay cool let's who is the radiant girl yeah. do you know what i mean like creating a story about who what kind of customers do come to us do you know what i mean and obviously like customer service and like trying to just stand out and not trying to make it this really posh and really like i wouldn't say bougie but we wanted to kind of create an experience especially as a black hair salon yeah, yeah, like yeah. white hair salons you know i even took up a job actually as a receptionist this is just completely i just remembered um i took a job as a receptionist at a salon in Knightsbridge so that I could see what it was like in wow. those salons. Wow. That's yeah. literally how far I went to really figure out like, cause obviously it's old money, like white salons have been around from the beginning of time, do you know what I mean? So I was like, what makes the salon experience good? So yeah, I was literally a receptionist at the salon and I saw the process and how it worked and I was like, all right, cool. And then I now took that to the salon. Was you a receptionist while you were still owner of that? Or were yeah, you no, I was still owner of, of Radian, but I took the job as, an, as a receptionist no, so that I could like figure out what they do. Do you yeah. know what I mean? And I completely forgot that I did that. I've lived so many lives, but um, <laughs> cause that's actually insane to do now no, that I think no, about no, it. No, it's that's proper. sick. That's <laughs> I've proper. just remembered. No, that's sick and I, and I love that. And I guess the reason I wanted to ask you about the business is because obviously now you mm -hmm. are your business as right. a content creator. Mm -hmm. Do you feel, cause I see a lot of people that work. So we work, work in a job and you leave your job and you start your business and you don't put nothing that you would do. Like you worked mad hours, you had schedules, you had mm. plans, you had <laughs> team yeah, meetings, yeah. you had all of this thing when you're working. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And now you're your own boss. You don't have none of that. Yeah, yeah, you don't have yeah, no yeah. weekly meeting. You don't have no catch up. You don't review. What, yeah, 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 yeah. But remember all those stuff is the reason why that business is successful right. because all these structures are in place. So now you've gone from running a company for all that time mm -hmm. and now you are your business. Mm -hmm. Do you feel there are key principles that you've taken over? Do you feel like you work as hard as when you had the business or do you feel like you're more relaxed because it's your because it's you mm. and you are your business whereas before you had to pay rent and you had to, so right, you had yeah, to make yeah, money yeah. because yeah. there were overheads and so forth yeah it's actually like a bit of both i'd say actually um i think because of the salon and that background you know everything i do i'm very big on detail and i'm very big on like things like matter so I've, I've i've definitely brought that over into like the kind of stuff that i do even like consistency that helped the salon grow a lot so i'm mm. very very big on being consistent and just showing up and knowing that not everything's going to be a hit but that's actually okay like not not everything's going to be 10 10 do you know what i mean but you still have to show up that's obviously come from the salon what i will say is that with the salon I had extreme anxiety, do you know what I mean? I'd wake up and my heart is doing shaka shaka, boom, 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 do you know what I mean? Because I don't know what the day is gonna hold. I don't mm. know if a stylist is gonna say they're not turning up or, you know, bills and, you know, whether Eon's gonna be like, you owe money or the bailiffs are gonna show up. Anything could happen at any point. So every morning I'm waking up anxious. But one thing I realized, obviously when the pandemic happened and luckily for me, I actually sold a salon before the pandemic. I was already over it, so thank God for that. Um, but 
I remember like waking up and not having that heavy anxiety anymore. And it felt really, really strange because mm. it's like, that's obviously imagine 10 years of having that tightness and that feeling of like, okay, something's about to happen. Something's about to happen. Da, 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 da. So I think the strangest thing about becoming a content creator is that obviously, of course, you have to manage your own schedule and you have to make sure that you're checking in and you're hitting your goal, po um, goal, goal posts and all of that kind of stuff. But I realized I didn't have to do as much as I did obviously when I had a salon yeah. and that was also okay. Like hard work for me looked like you know, what it was like with the salon. Like obviously, you know, by nine or whatever, 10, you're at the salon, you're doing the receptionist, you're doing this, you're having meetings. It's like so much was going on. So when my life was kind of transitioning into what I do now, and I have days like, you know, a Monday afternoon, I'm going for a cheeky Pilates. You know what I'm saying? That feels like, <laughs> oh my days, you're being so bummy. But at the same time, it's like, no, I actually manage my time now. There's a yeah. bit more flexibility. It's a different way of working, but it's still like, it still works and it still clicks. So it was kind of like mentally in my brain, I had to like switch it up a little bit and be yeah. like, okay, it's cool. But like you said, you do have to be on it. Cause obviously if you don't do certain things, you'd be thinking, cause in your, as a creative, you can have loads of ideas and you feel like, cause you have the ideas and you talk about it, you feel like you've done it. And it's only, and you'd be complaining like, oh, why didn't I get this opportunity, man? Why didn't I get this? And I remember one of my friends was like, okay, but, not being funny, like, what have you actually like done? And I was like, what do you mean? I've been working hard. She was like, you kind of just been talking about it. You haven't actually <laughs> done it. I was like, oh, T, you're actually right. Like when I sat down and I used the business brain mm. and I like broke, looked at my pages, I was like, actually, if I was a business person looking at this page, there's not much I can do with this. Mm. Do you know what I mean? And that's what made me deep that, all right, cool. You can't be chilling. You know, it's a real job. And if it's full time, you have to literally put in the hours. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, love that. Yeah. Just before we move off the um, hair salon, right? I want to ask because I guess in this day and age, there's, how do I put it? We've got one life, not double. Mm. So there's a lot of people in situations that they know aren't going to get them to where they want to be. Mm. It's incredibly hard to make that decision or make that change and in, in your situation it probably was hard for you mm -hmm. uh, because you have this hair salon you've been running for 10 years mm -hmm. and it's an ex-family business as well mm -hmm. and you're at the top of it for a lot of people they might have just stayed in that situation that was giving them a lot of anxiety mm -hmm. for another 10 years like what was it that made you feel that you know what i'm gonna make this change and sell it unfortunately you sold it just before the pandemic as well do you know what I think with lean, like leading up to the time where I was about to sell it, I had already lost one of my branches. Like, so I had two branches. I'd already lost Croydon essentially because we got the salon and we thought the money was gonna come, which I would never advise to do that and you spend the money that you're anticipating as opposed to the money being in your account. Mm -hmm. But obviously I was young and anyways. So by the time we moved into Croydon a year later, we were backdated on rent like mm. hugely so it was like a lot of like a lot going on we had to like overdo it in order but essentially after we paid it off the landlord was just a bit of a that, that, the word i want to use i won't use it but he was very very wicked and when we paid him back he still essentially took the shop from us anyways so we lost that shop that year was just insane for me and i remember feeling stressed all the time because obviously a lot's going on lost the salon there was other things that were going on in like my personal life and i was like okay cool I'm about to go into the next decade of my life. When I started working at the salon, I had no idea what was gonna happen, right? I had, I was just living it like day by day, I had no idea. And I thought to myself, I'm about to go into the next decade of my life. Am I gonna go into it knowing what it's already been? Do you know what I mean? I already mm. know what it's been like now. I've been doing the salon for 10 years. I know what, it, I know how it goes. I know what stress it's given me. There's great moments, but essentially I know the kind of life it's brought me. Am I really gonna go in to like my thirties with the same thing. Like I want to like settle down. I want to have a family. Am I going to be in my house and someone's calling me about the water bill or calling me about Eon or calling me about a stuff? Do you know what I mean? I was just, I was just trying to picture the kind of life I wanted. I was like, I don't want that life. Do you know what I mean? I just don't want it. It's just not clicking for me. I'm not going to go into it knowing what it's going to be like. I'm not doing that. So I just remember, I remember a staff member was doing the whole like, oh, I'm going to leave you, like the whole threatening thing. And I thought, you know what? This is actually fantastic. I, I literally walked out of the salon. I called my dad. I remember it was raining. It was really dramatic, actually. It was like raining. It was dark. I was like, oh, this is kind of like a movie. Anyways, <laughs> <laughs> I called my dad and I was like, do you know what? I'm going to sell the salon. And my dad was like, thank God. <laughs> 
Wow. Literally. He was like, thank God, because my parents had seen it literally had just stripped me mm. of so much of me. Mm. And I didn't even, I went to my neighbors. I said, which one of you guys want this shop? Let me know. Whoever gave me the highest price, that's who I gave it to. I didn't, I was like, it has to go. It has to go now because I know what my life looks like. And it does not include managing 11 staff, 20 staff and their lives being more important than mine. Mm -hmm. I'm over it. I don't want to do it anymore. And that was the end of it. Literally. Wow. Yeah. I was like, I don't want to do it. You, you mentioned something that's um, important there and something that I've been speaking about quite a lot. Mm -hmm. It's like thinking forward, forecasting, what is the life mm -hmm. that I want for myself? And is what I'm doing now going to get me that basically? So you sold the salon now mm -hmm. and you've taken on a journey a, a, an adaptation on what you were doing before which is drama so it's all in the same field effectively mm -hmm. um, and now you're a podcaster so I, I guess what I'm asking is that do you feel like what you're doing now is more aligned with who you are and where you want to take things yeah 100% like 100% I just feel like the thing is it's not like it's perfect do you know what I mean it's not like oh this is yeah it's not perfect but I do feel like I've just gone back on, I've gone back on track. Do you know what I mean? I almost feel like, you know, I went to New York and then I came back and then I've gone around only to kind of come back to like the route I was initially supposed to take. Do you mm. know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've sense. always been a creative. That's how my parents supported me. Do you know what I mean? Like from second, like from, like I was going to like drama school from when I was like 12 years old. Do you oh, know what seriously? I mean? Yeah. So I've always been very one tracked minded. Like I already knew I wasn't going to uni. I didn't know I was going to New York, mm. but I, didn't, I already knew I, was, I wasn't I was going to uni. I was like, it's not for me. So I've always been very like, this is what mm. I'm going to do. And I think sometimes in life we allow like, you know, we can get diverted a little bit and yeah, it's yeah. fine. Cause obviously I learned so much and there's obviously so many lessons that came from like being a salon owner and the people that I met it's, it has helped me in what I do now of as course, well. Do you know what course. I mean? So it's all come together, but I do I do think it was a bit of a, you know, a little diversion. Do you know what I mean? Like, it felt like it was a safe place to be. Like, if I carried on with the salon, it's not that it wouldn't have clicked, yeah. but it would have just been safe. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And I really do believe that we have alternative lives that we could have. Like, I feel like it just depends on the decisions that you make. I'm not saying that, each life that you decide to choose wouldn't be good. Like it probably would be good. It probably would be nice. It mm. might be cozy. But is it like the best life you could have? Is it the best alternative life? I don't know. I feel like I was living a version that was okay. I would have been all right. But this one is way better, essentially. Absolutely. So let's get into that. Let's give the people them a week in the life of Miss Rita B as a content creator and podcaster. What does that look like? Because once again, I think there's a lot of people that want to get an insight into what it's like being a full-time content creator because for a lot of people out there it looks like the perfect job it looks like soft life i know but now when i even describe it it's gonna still sound like that a little oh, let's bit let's go for it, Do it. What I mean? it. i'm like it, okay okay what's a week okay maybe i'll go for like this week um so usually I take Mondays actually slow, which is probably the opposite of what most people do. But I like to kind of settle into the week essentially. So I'll use Mondays as like admin, like catching up on things. You know, it's my podcast day as well. So obviously going through social clips, da 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 da, quite chilled. And then I would have a day in a week where I record my podcast. Um, I also use like Mondays to prep for the episode and stuff like that. And then I'll have a day where obviously I record my podcast and all of that kind of stuff. And then there'll be a day where it's like, essentially like building out ideas, mm -hmm. you know, of things that I want to do, um, meetings with my manager, the catch up and all of that kind of stuff. And then there'll just be like events as well. And the thing about events, like I know that it does look like it's really, really fun and da 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 da. Is I'm, it fun? Sometimes it is and sometimes it isn't, but sometimes I'll just go to just essentially like, you know, meet the brand, you know, just to see if there's a possibility, obviously if it's a brand that I want to work with and stuff like that. But to be honest, a lot of like, the weeks is like, there's very, it can be quite mundane if you're not actively doing something. So there'll be days where then I'm like recording content essentially, yeah. which is organic content. So it mm. kind of feels like it's not real work because it is organic stuff. Yeah. But then there'll also be weeks where you you want to do the organic stuff, but also you, you're working with brands. So you've got deadlines. So you're sending them like, a not a deck, but like your idea of what you yeah. want to do. You're filming it. They're sending it back to you saying, oh, actually we want it to be like this. or we want it to be like that. And then you're having to like redo it. You're having to do edits. So it's very much, very samey in terms of like, 
I can't even describe it. Like, it feels like it isn't hard work, but obviously, like, it actually is. Because especially for the kind of niche I'm in, which is comedy and entertainment, a lot of my content is thinking of things that are entertaining mm, and things yeah. that are relatable or things that are funny. And also, like, doing research on, like, what's clicking and what's not clicking. And so a lot of it feels very like oh it's nothing this is mm. so chill but it's like a lot on the brain as well do you know what i mean it's a lot of thinking going into it and yeah so i don't know if that even sounds like, no, like it, it, it sounds quite clear i think that like one of the things that you um mentioned which is probably the toughest thing is that you kind of got to try and make something out of nothing at the same essentially, time especially yeah. when you're, especially when it comes to earning because you're making organic content mm. um with the hope that it builds up traction um, obviously there is a science to it but with the hope that it builds up traction mm -hmm. with the hope that a brand um, aligns with it mm -hmm. and then they reach out to you and and that's why I understood completely what, what you said about events yeah. because sometimes you just got to be out to yeah, know what's yeah. going on like yeah, when you're yeah, yeah. active it just means that there's more chance of you meeting people yeah. um, collaborating with people being yeah, there yeah, um, yeah, yeah. seeing certain people that are in the building basically right, right. so yeah. um, com I'm completely with that yeah, yeah, yeah. regarding your content creation you, did, did you always do comedy? yeah Seriously? Yeah, I've always done comedy. So your, your your content creation has always had that comedic element because I felt like that kind of that came in later. No, I mean it just means you didn't find it funny. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> he saw wow. it and was like, okay, <laughs> she's being real serious. This isn't comedy. Do you know what I mean? That's what it's really given. But yeah, I think I've always done. But it's that dry humor though sometimes. Y yeah, and that's okay. that's where I get in trouble. Okay, when you say trouble, what, because what my humor that? is very very dry, like. It's one of those things where like, it's it's very nuanced, some of the things I would say like, and it's very like sarcastic sometimes. So sometimes because of how I talk or because of how my face is, people take it very, very literally, do you mm. know what I mean? But I'm just joking, do you know what I mean? How is your face? It's just straight, you know what I'm saying? Like I just won't, I would say something <laughs> that it sounds insane, but I won't smile about it. Do you know okay, what I mean? Yeah, yeah, like yeah, I'll yeah. be, cause I'm being, I'm like, especially with like my podcast, I've had clips that have gone viral but oh, the, the Americans yeah, would be yeah, on me yeah, like, yeah, 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 no, yeah, this is the most ridiculous thing I've seen. I think I said something about, um, what did I say? I think I said something about God. I think I said something like, um, you know, have you, sometimes I don't want to leave it in God's hands. Do you know what I mean? Like, I feel like what if God forgives and now I'm still dealing with it. But the way I said it was like, it was in a jokey way. Do you know what I mean? I weren't being disrespectful. And then I had all the Christians in my comments. They were like, no, you have to leave it in God's hands. It's God's in control. Da, 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 da. And they'll just come with me and they're like, you need to get born again, again. I was like, rah, <laughs> this is crazy. Like, I'm just saying something that essentially like we all like think about it, but it's not that deep. Like mm. I forgot and I even said it, it's not that deep, but because it's so straight, people are like, is she serious or is she not? And it looks like I'm being the most serious that you could ever imagine. But a lot of the time I'm joking, like it's not that deep. Do you know what I mean? But that gets me in trouble quite a lot. So maybe my earlier stuff. Maybe, yeah, 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 yeah. You maybe, know, it wasn't maybe. really clicking for you. No, you know no, it's mean? clicking, it's clicking. You were just it's the like, dry humor, it's dry humor, You're like, dry oh, this is dry, dry without the humor. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you were thinking. But yeah, it's always been a bit of comedy, a little tinge of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A bit yeah. of making fun of yourself. And sometimes I am serious though. Like it's not kiki all the time. Like sometimes I'm, I am being serious. I you know what I'm saying? The thing, the, the videos that I like of yours when you're talking about relationships and dating, mm. which is hilarious. And Thank you. I've seen what you've done for others and did it like that type yeah. of. How much of it is like real life true, and how much of it is thus? This is what the character that you're playing, you think they would be going through. Do you know what? In the beginning, it was very much based on like real stuff. Yeah. And then some of the comments started to hurt my feelings. Chai. Because I was like, this is my role, this is my life. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah, what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. Like, and I didn't like the idea of like people feeling like they understood like my date. Because sometimes I'll be saying one thing, but I'm with the, I'm dating someone. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, like yeah, he's yeah. watched the video. Like, well, just chill it. Like it's not that deep, you know, because it wouldn't be in the moment. It'll yeah. be very much like an experience from like five years ago yeah. or whatever that I'm just talking about now. But people obviously will just take it quite literally. And I remember there was a time I was going through a breakup and I was trying to like laugh it, laugh away my pain. Do you know what I mean? 
But then people were making some comments that were stinging me a bit too much. I was like, <laughs> do you know what? Yeah, I'm actually in real pain. So I don't want to talk about this anymore. Do you know what I mean? Mm. So I started to like pull back. And I spoke to Marvin. Um, He's like a videographer. And he also like consults with like content creation and content creators and helping them shoot content. Mm. And I had like a, a call with him. And he was like, you know, because I was saying I don't want to talk about relationships anymore. And that's when he was like, do you know what, though? You need to see it as a character. Like, if you see it as it's just you, it feels way too close to home. So that's yeah. probably why, like, you're feeling it. But if you actually just see it as, like, a character or, you know, like, it's just stories that you know are happening that will help you to not be as connected to it. Yeah. So I started doing that a little bit more. But I actually don't talk about dating as much as I did before because yeah. of that. I didn't want to be that girl where it's like, you know, people say really mean things like, oh, she's going to be single for the rest of her life. I said, God forbid, please. Don't, don't be speaking this over my life. Do you know what I mean? Like, uh, yeah. and it gets a bit too mm. much. But yeah, when I do talk about it more so, it is more so like what I'm seeing around me as opposed to like my actual life and my actual personal life. Yeah. I try to keep some stuff to myself. And when you say Marv, you talk about Marv Brown, right? Yeah, Marv Brown, yeah, so, yeah. So, big up Marv. How, yeah. how, do, how do you find working with him? Because obviously I've seen him take a lot of content creators, their accounts, because there's there's a science behind it. Obviously he's, he's a videographer, he yeah, understands yeah. the science, he's learned the algorithm and how to how to create. How do you find working with someone? Because obviously a lot of time when it comes to content creating, you're making it yourself and you've got your own style. Yeah. And then when someone says, well, actually it's great to do that, but we're not getting the numbers doing that. Yeah. We need to do X, Y, Z. I ha wish I did work with him properly. I actually didn't get oh. to like work with him. Like I just did a call with him and that call, I need to hold at him again actually. <laughs> because you know what? <laughs> yeah, thank you. Yeah, do you know what? It was so good. Like I'm very, very open to feedback yeah. and I'm very open to like seeing how can we make things tighter? How yeah. can we make things how could because sometimes like i said some things don't land do you know what i mean in my head i'm like oh that's so clear and it will take someone else seeing it being like oh no actually if you especially when it comes to editing like a lot of the time it's in the edit do you mm. know what i mean so i could film something and people are like oh well, how do you think it went and i'm like i'm not gonna know until i see the edit because yeah. especially when it comes to comedy it's not just about what you're what's being said it's like what's being said how it's being said the different shots you know like how it just how it's been cut, do you know what I mean? If you watch a comedy show, there's just so much that like goes into it to create yeah. that laugh. Mm -hmm. So Marvin was great because he was just like kind of simplifying things yeah. in my brain. And yeah. it was like, oh, this makes sense. And then he was like, do you know what? You need to look at the stuff that has worked. Yeah. And go back and what worked? What were the topics? And how was it shot? And then go back to that and never be afraid to like repeat it. So like, I remember there was like a video that I did about, um, so he would just basically, for example, he would just say like, if there was like a, a video that I did about being a bridesmaid, right? And that was like, that did well. Don't be afraid to still use that same topic and then rejig it in a different way. Yeah. Cause you know that topic is a good topic. Yeah. But now if maybe the video was talking to camera, why not try and do that same topic and do it as a skit? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So it's like, I guess that was like the yeah. science behind it in terms of like, never be afraid to kind of repeat your ideas. Like yeah. never be afraid to repurpose it. And I was like, you're right, because I was getting stuck because I kept wanting to think of something new. Brand new, like you know brand, like brand original, new. original. Yeah, and I'm like, <laughs> why am I doing that? Do you know what I mean? There's literally nothing original under the sun. And I think we were talking about this earlier. Like, yeah. I'm very big on like, what works? Like, I'm not trying to be the first of my name. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. What works? What clicks? What's the science? Cool. Now that we know the science and we know the recipe, now we can sprinkle, because it's always going to be yours if you add yourself to it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, shout out to Marv. I need to holler at him again, because that was good. Yeah. yeah. No, that's it. So with content, where do you see it? How do you monetize it? Because that's mm -hmm. the thing, right? Content's great. You're putting out content. Mm -hmm. But if you're not making money from it, it's, it's long. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, what's yeah. The, like, <laughs> so how do you... How do you monetize? Because obviously I'm lucky and Bricks, we're lucky. We work in a niche, right? So mm -hmm. we work in finance, Bricks works property, can do both. So mm -hmm. we know our, we know that we're targeting banks, you know? And, mm -hmm. and luckily for us, a lot of the brands that we are targeting, content is probably their weakest thing. So <laughs> for, like, yeah. Like, like, like so, a saviour like, for them. Yeah, like, so, <laughs> yeah, not facts. So it makes our job a lot easier yeah, yeah. because when you think about like financial, com the, the hardest thing is to add personality to finance. Yeah, it's always yeah, seen yeah, yeah. very serious, very yeah, boring, yeah, yeah, very yeah, regulated. Yeah, yeah. So that's something that we can bring that they struggle to do right. internally. So yeah. it's easy for us. But you're working with brands that already have mad personality and yeah, culture yeah, yeah. and are already part of the culture intertwined. Yeah, yeah. And it's like, they've got everyone, that everyone, people are already wearing their stuff or using their stuff anyway. Mm -hmm. 
how do you make them, how do you stand out so you are the reason why they want to use to monetize? That's really interesting, actually. I don't think I've really um, thought about it before, really. I mean, I guess for me, it's actually like, as I'm talking about it, it's actually kind of weird that I've, I have been able to survive, actually, because I'm just like, how? <laughs> actually, like, now that we're actually yeah. talking about it. But, um... Because it's such an, an insane thought that we're waiting for brands to contact us. It's, so, yeah. it's such a risk. Anyway, sorry. Um, I think for me, especially when I came into the space, I don't think there were loads of people yeah. who were personalities. Yeah. Okay. I think when it comes to like influencing, obviously I think it started from like beauty, hair, and essentially they're like trying to sell you something, right? Mm -hmm. They're trying to sell you hair products, yeah, yeah. makeup and stuff like that. And it was all about obviously how you look and all of that kind of stuff. And back then as well, a lot of the girls weren't really talking unless you were on YouTube, yeah. do you know what I mean? So I think now there is more personality, but I don't know if there's like, there are a lot of people doing comedy, but, it's because it's personality, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I just think when you're kind of being your authentic self and you're like bringing personality, they're kind of buying into you and buying into like what your vibe is and all yeah. of that kind of stuff. And a lot of the coolest brands that I've worked with has come from them allowing me to just be, essentially just be myself kind of thing. But one thing I did do very early on, and I guess it does come from my salon days, is I made sure I was brand like brandable from mm. early. Mm. So like even back then when like people were doing videos and like you go on their page and it was so chaotic. Yeah. But I like to remind people like, I know I'm funny, but I'm also Leng. Do mm. you know what I mean? So we're gonna bring this together. Like I'm not just like being goofy. I can put my hair together. I can wear my makeup well. And I think there was that combination of like, she's funny, but also she's brandable as well. Mm. Do you know what I mean? And I think bringing that together kind of made the page really clean. So early on, I was getting really, yeah. really cool brands from yeah. the beginning because it wasn't just like 50 videos of me like talking in like a low light yeah. and like bad quality. Like, do you know what I mean? Everything was about quality from the beginning and that's what brands want. Um, they want good quality. Everything was quite niche and it was funny. Sometimes the brand work isn't as funny, but I think you just kind of knew what I was about quite early on, but I did have to still niche down. And I think I'm still in that space now where I'm still trying to not, yeah, kind of niche down and make myself even more like create like a full blown brand, which is why I did the podcast as well. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Because I felt mm. the podcast, it kind of shows my vibe even more and shows like, what my comedy is like because obviously like you said you didn't get my comedy early on. <laughs> she's only she's gonna she's, she's gonna, gonna yeah, for she's the gonna whole thing. so as you didn't get it do you <laughs> know what i mean i feel like the podcast allows you because it's more than a minute you know you can actually see the comedy a bit more <laughs> do you know what i mean like, i see i see i see i see you know what i'm I see, saying so, so i think you're gonna subscribe that. right that's no, subscribe she already knows man <laughs> Ri already knows but like first first five episodes i was there man you like Come yeah on. okay i'm locked in i'm locked in i'm locked in, I'm locked in. I'm locked but in. yeah i think brandon is very very key and i think that's what's i yeah. think I actually do think i don't know for a fact but i do think that maybe that's what's like helped me to kind of like separate a little bit so other than brandon have you thought about how else you're going to make money from this so like have you thought about community because obviously you've got a group of individuals that you've got your own community i'm sure mm -hmm. you see the same people comment all the time yeah, yeah, yeah have yeah. you thought about how do i create something that's not relying on brands that, like, we are, like... Yeah, well, that's why I did the podcast. Because last, okay. I think, was it even last year? I think last year I had, like, a dip. Yeah. You know, in terms of, like, being contacted. And obviously, like, obviously with managers as well. Mm -hmm. I do say we, obviously, we want inbound. But your managers are, like, hopefully they're reaching out as well and trying to connect the dots and make things happen. Mm. But essentially, like, last year I had a bit of a dip. And I was like, this can't be my life. I can't experience this again. Like, <laughs> this feeling of, like, not having work for, like... I think it was like two, three months. Hmm. And luckily I'd worked a lot up until that. So I yeah. still had money, but it was like, I didn't have cash flow for like two, three months. I was like, mm. this is this is really scary actually. I can't, and I was like, Rita, you know better than this. You come from a business background. You can't be, you know, relying on just brands. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, but I was just being lazy because I was tired. Imagine you've been in business for 10 years. I just wanted to rest. Do you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And even in the pandemic, I had an online store that was making me so much money until I got a season to desist from Bottega. It was actually really, really, really disrespectful because I'm just a small brand. Like, what does Bottega want with me? Anyways, sorry, I digressed. Because <laughs> <laughs> every time I remember, it gets me so annoyed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it's yeah, like, yeah. anyways. Um, but I would say that the podcast was the reason why yeah. I was like, I'm not just relying on brands. 
I feel like if I can build my own thing, then obviously I'm in a more powerful place, right? Yeah, and essentially like, you know, I want to be able to like produce my own stuff. Like I'll have an acting background. So essentially like me doing a podcast was a way of me gaining some sort of power over my career and putting forward like how I want to be seen. So it's like proof of concept essentially. Mm. So now when I'm talking about, oh, actually I want to do this, it's like, it's going to be like this as opposed to like, I'm just expecting people to see me as a presenter or see me as a host without really seeing anything. Do you know what I mean? So that's the way I've been going. I think in terms of building community that has helped because now there's a community of people that they're locked in every Monday. And like, if I don't post, they're like, oh, I missed you. And I'm like, oh, I feel missed. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? So I think it's like growing in that way and it's like building you know, this community, but I have been blessed because I guess it's been, what, three years and, you know, my managers, you know, have helped to that really just make sure that I get really great deals that, you know, it makes sense. So I'm able to obviously live well, but yeah, I think, I mean, in the years to come, it is just going to be about community. And I Absolutely. think that is the main thing, community and relatability, which I should have probably said earlier as well. Like, I think that also has helped because people have felt that they can relate to me. And I think that's really important to be relatable. Do you know what I mean? I think your vulnerability allows you to be relatable as well because you're very outspoken. You just say it how it is. Yeah. You're a bit of a straight shooter. And I think even the concept, I love the concept of the podcast, Faking Adulthood, mm -hmm. because it's kind of like, it's kind of what everybody is going through, but they're not talking about it, basically. Yeah. And just to what Iman said, I think it's an excellent opportunity to kind of like really build a strong community of people that like admit they're faking adulthood. Yeah, and yeah. then maybe you take them off platform. It's like a newsletter. Yeah, and then you yeah, know, once yeah. you go on a newsletter, you don't know where you're going to take it from there, but yeah, yeah, newsletter is yeah, the yeah, beginning yeah. of, of yeah. something. Do you yeah, know what I'm trying yeah, to say? Yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I think yeah, you're proper onto something yeah, there. You spoke you. about management quite a lot. There's a lot of content creators that want to get into content creation. Mm -hmm. At what point do you think it's best to search for management? Oh, it's such a good question. Um, I've just moved. I've got new managers now and I was literally just talking to them about that. Like, how do you know when it's time? I think it's interesting because the management thing is so funny because it's like, essentially in the beginning, they're just obviously managing your inbound, right? And you can kind of feel like I'm getting this inbound. Why am I having to give 20%? Like yeah. a Everybody job where I was going to get the job anyway. <laughs> Everybody says Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, you're like, I'm going to get the job anyway. Like, I don't need this. But I think what I found, the value has been, um, obviously you have a support system. Mm. Obviously they can negotiate the fee to be a lot higher. They mm. know your worth a lot more. They know how the business works. I think you would know that it's time for you to get a manager where essentially like you can't necessarily like keep up. Yeah. Maybe. I think that's important. Um, yeah, you can't keep up. You're missing out on opportunities because you can't keep up. Or maybe like you feel, it feels hard for you to negotiate. Do you know what I mean? Like for me, I've always found it really hard to negotiate because I've always seen things from both sides. Yeah the business side of someone that used to reach out to influencers back in my salon days and then now being on the other side. And I always feel a little bit bad, isn't it? I'm just like, oh, like, I think two's, two's all right. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> I don't need more than that. Like, it's okay. Like, let's manage. Like, was, I used to come from that perspective. And obviously your managers, they don't give a heck in it. So they're like, nah, you're asking for this. It's got to be four or it's got to be this or it's got to be that. So I think if you already know that you're not, you don't, you don't want to manage that stuff. All you want to do it's create. create. You don't want to yeah. man. You don't want to deal with the business and stuff. You don't want to be reading contracts. It's not for you. You don't have the the time. It's not your vibe. Then I think get a manager because at least you know you're covered. You're protected. They've got your back. But then if you feel like actually I can manage it myself, then just get an assistant. Do you know what I mean? That's yeah. what I would say. Just get an assistant. You know, be paying them whatever, whatever. I think for different people, it's different. Some people cannot even deal with managers. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Because even when your manager's advising you, you're saying no, my way or the highway. So <laughs> there's no point. There's no need. Yeah, there's, yeah, no yeah. Need. there's no need. Do you yeah, know what yeah. I mean? Just, just, be, just hiring someone to argue against. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so just have someone that can help you with your admin and just keep it, keep it going. Yeah, no, I love that. I think, yeah, with the manager thing, it is difficult, but I think you're right in regards to like, I think for me, like your manager knows not just what you are, but also the market. Yeah. Because sometimes the market is different. Yeah. So last year, like for example, like last year you might have been able to do get three k, four k a post. Yeah. Managers tell me, listen, not just you, but even my other acts 
right now, we're taking one and a half. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you understand? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, right yeah. now, this in this season. Yeah. In this season. If you're, if you're, if you're unaware. <laughs> in this season. In this season. Because it's different seasons. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. like right now, TV struggling, ads are struggling, brands are struggling. Yeah. Those things like, are so important. Like, there's so much things going on. So, yeah. if you don't understand that and you're still quoting last year's price. Ah, uh, you're, you're gonna You're going to be, oh, no one's taking you serious. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, so, yeah. in that sense, that's where it helps. But you mentioned a good thing also. Be busy first. Yeah. yeah. Listen, I hate you just, you've got one viral video now you're looking I'm looking for management can you take a breath <laughs> well, can we take a breath, <laughs> take a breath? Like, hey, okay? relax okay. Relax. Like, like, oh, guys, I'm looking for a manager oh, <laughs> relax <laughs> let's like duplicate the methods yeah. let's make sure this actually yeah. can happen more than once yeah like, let's yeah. Do this a few yeah. Times. yeah yeah you don't like, have to rush into it but I think a lot of people see like managers as like okay even if I'm not busy a manager's gonna make me busy you know? mm-hmm. uh-uh. but it's like obviously they're great managers and they do they will you know put you out there but essentially like they have to show your page as well mm, and yeah. be like all right cool this is what they're doing this is what they're about do you know what i mean i feel like i was like an underdog for i feel i actually still feel like a bit of an underdog i feel like drake in his like mixtape era <laughs> <laughs> do you know what i mean what mix it like the first one so far gone do you okay, know what i mean okay. i just feel like you know <laughs> you know yeah the final, but i just feel like if you know you know i'm not like mainstream yet you know that just, kind of vibe. I just like to add, he lo- Betty laughed that one, so you know you're actually funny. Like <laughs> you're trying to front earlier. Like, nah, 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 I didn't nah. get that. Came didn't get like, oh, but do you know how crazy that is to say to someone? Now Rita's bare funny. No, man. but do you know how crazy it is to say to you someone? Know what? Like, maybe, oh, you always doing comedy. <laughs> nah, 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 nah. Someone started doing comedy, and you now said, "Did you always?" I must have been mixed up the page, man. Don't mind me, man. I must have been mixed up the page. Someone else's page. <laughs> That's crazy. So far, so far gone. So far gone. Yeah, yeah. So I feel, yeah, <laughs> yeah, a bit of an underground artist. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? That's how I. That's the era that I think I'm in, like right now. But I can't remember why I said that now. You said it because you were talking about you feel that you're a bit of an underdog at the moment when it comes to. But why did I say that before? Am uh, I talking about managers? Well, we're talking about managers. How did you get there? I don't know how I got there. Maybe I just wanted to say I'm an underdog. Maybe you just had that so far gone land and it was a good one. It was a really good <laughs> album. <laughs> no, that wasn't, I had a really good point, but it's gone now. Sorry. No, nah, no worries. Yeah, no worries. It's over. <laughs> um, I want to talk about faking adulthood, right? It's mm-hmm. a big um, project to take on, right? Mm-hmm. To, say, to say to yourself, you're starting a podcast. Yeah. You spoke about why you wanted to start it. Mm-hmm. Um, how have you found managing that has been and what have you seen that it's done so far? Because a lot of people, know, I guess podcast was one of the things that, I think there's a stat somewhere that says that like between 2020 and like 2023, like the amount of podcasts yeah. that were started was crazy. And then yeah. they say the amount of people that get to episode 10, the amount of people that get to yeah. episode 30, and uh, you're past both at the moment. So yeah. Yeah, yeah, I am. I'm 36 now. Jeez, Which congrats, man. Thank you, yeah. Um, I feel like it's re- podcasts are very, very hard. Yeah. And that's what I didn't anticipate. Like, I was quite shocked at the work. And I was like, who told me to do this? This is a lot of work. <laughs> like, this is, yeah, it takes up most of my time, to be honest. Because, obviously, like, I need to find a guest. Um, I need to prep. And then, you know, once I film it and whatever, the only thing I don't do is edit it. But then I have to watch it back. I need to pick all the social clips. Obviously, see what's funny, what's not. And a lot of the time, even when I get the edits back, I still would cut it down to try and make it funnier. Do you know what I mean? Cut out any gaps or cut up words or whatever and still bring it together. So it's like a lot to, and then once you've done that, it's time for another episode. Do you know what I mean? So it's like a lot of, um, Mm. a lot to do. And I didn't actually anticipate that at all, but I do really enjoy it. But one thing I think it has given me is visibility, which was the important thing. I think, you know, like I've been, you know, people have been seeing my face and obviously people see my TikToks and people have seen me from different stages. Like it might be from when I was really talking about the relationship stuff. So that's where people know me from and all of that kind of stuff. But I think the podcast has like given more visibility and given people a very strong idea about what Rita is and what Rita is about. Do you know what I mean? And now when I'm out and about, a lot of people are coming up to me about the podcast more. Mm. Before it was like, oh, I know you from TikTok. But now it's like, oh, I, your podcast. Oh, your podcast, da, 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 blah, blah, blah. So I think it's created visibility and in return it's brought me more work. Because I mean, my managers at the time were like, you should be really proud of yourself because this you doing this podcast has actually really put you in, like, in front of more people, mm. essentially. So I think that's what it's done so far. But it's just like the beginning, really, because I feel like now that I know I know how to do a podcast and obviously put together a show, I just want to do more. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. just do more stuff and create like more projects. And that's what I was talking about the whole like being a produ- like being a producer and like producing your own stuff and like your own projects and that kind of stuff. But um, 
it's really hard. I just mm. cannot believe how hard it is. I'm just like, I thought I'd just sit down and yap and it's just very technical, you know, there's a lot going on, you know, yeah. so, but it's, it's it's still good, I enjoy it. But you mentioned being a, like feeling like an underdog and so forth. Mm. Do you compare yourself to your peers? Do you, is that where that comes from? Do you feel like, are there people that you look at and say, they do something similar to me and you feel like an underdog to them or or where does that come from? I think the underdog thing comes from more so, like I just feel like, you know what? I've been really blessed. Like yeah. the numbers that I have on my socials, mm-hmm. they're actually quite small in comparison to a lot of people who do what I do full time. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? I've been really blessed in that sense. So even though I do feel like, so when I say underdog, it is more so like numbers wise. Like there's people who do like exactly what I do, but they're nearly on a milli. Do you know what I mean? In terms of their following, like, you know, there's people that I watch and like, I mean, this girl, like she's amazing, Ayame, like she's great and she's like doing her thing. And I'm pretty sure like we'll probably be in a similar niche and I'm pretty sure she's about to hit a milli. Like by the end of the year, she's definitely going to have 1 million followers. Do you know what I mean? So I feel like in that sense, in terms of like numbers and stuff like that, it does feel like I'm still like on the come up. And it's not a bad thing. Like I'm okay with it because I'm, I'm new and whatever. But I don't compare myself to like my friends per se in terms of like the stuff they're doing in their career. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I think I'm looking at it from like, on the business side yeah. that if I was to see everyone's pages and like the stuff that they've done I'm like okay cool this person is more she's not micro anymore do you know what I mean because this is the number she's getting yeah. if she puts a video out minimum this is the kind of views that she's gonna get whereas with me I get great views really thankful I think my community that's what I mean I feel like I'm an underdog in a sense where like everyone might not know me but the people who do they're like locked in do you know what I yeah. mean there's like this little on my podcast I always end it with like I don't want to be your secret lover. Do you know what I mean? I don't want to be your secret. I want to be mainstream. So like, you know, share me kind of thing. Yeah. Cause it feels like the ones that know me, they really know me and it's starting to like spread out. But yeah. I don't think it's like, you, you know, you just put my name in a hat and you're like, oh, really? and everyone's going to be like, yeah, 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 yeah. Do you know what I mean? Some people still may not know. So that's what I mean. It's quite like, yeah. you know, underdog, but we're growing and we're growing and we're growing step by step, that kind of vibe. Okay, that makes sense. And I think we all get that. Like yeah. just as content creators, I know like for me, Sometimes I see people, I'm like, rah, okay, cool. Like, yeah. the numbers are the numbers, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Mm. And I feel like, rah, for, but I know when I go outside, I know people know, man. And yeah, I, yeah, know, yeah. I know the impact and yeah, like, yeah. I know how much videos and how much household names and mangoes, different places in the country. And yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. you know, it's working. It's and working, you, exactly. You know what I mean? It's out yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. But sometimes people will consume your content and enjoy your content. Yeah. But there's just that, that miss on, Plus yeah, yeah. Follow, to follow and, and yeah. yeah and it's annoying like when it has to be about numbers <laughs> it, is, yeah. it, is. it is a bit like oh but well, you, well, you know how long you travel to studio <laughs> yeah, <laughs> what you yeah, yeah. and it's just like right. come on guys follow the team, bro. yeah but I get it I do get it and yeah, I just yeah. think it's really good to because like, when you just think actually I'm still working anyway yeah, yeah. and that's what it really comes down to like I've met people who they have loads I mean I remember going on a brand trip and I was talking about, obviously, I get paid TikTok, like on TikTok, I would be working with brands, like very, very cool brands on my TikTok. And I think at the time I just had like maybe just under a hundred or something like that. And I was with people who had like millions and they still weren't making money from their page at all. And mm. I was like, how are you not, mm. like you've got the big numbers, like yeah. how are you not making money from it yet? But again, I think it comes down to that whole like, the brand side of things like they've got the numbers they're going viral all the time but they're not going viral for a particular reason like they're going viral randomly for different random things so it's not painting a picture yeah. that's creating that community and that vibe that brands want to work with them but i'm like you know what as long as you're working yeah. and you're making your money and like you said you're going outside and people do know who you are and da, 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 da. sometimes you just have to erase the whole number thing even though it's very very difficult yeah but also it, it gives me something to expire, like it gives me something to aspire to as well. Do you know what I mean? Because when I see people who do like comedy and do things that are like very niche and it's similar to what I do, I'm like, bet if you can do it, I can do that too. Do you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. It just makes me see like how far it can actually go. And I'll be saying to God all the time, these people don't have two heads. Yeah. Uh, so <laughs> I know <laughs> for a fact, yeah, because I know for a fact, if like, that person can do it. Especially when you see people in America, you see someone like Z-Way, who's like a presenter as well. You see like Amelia, I know that there's questions and people, you know, in the community about Amelia, chicken shop date. Yeah. But I've been following her from like 10 years ago when I wanted to do a show and yeah. I didn't, I was procrastinating and I didn't do the show. She's been doing it for 10 years and now look at where she's at. So yeah. when you see people doing that, you're like, 
it's actually sick to like yeah. to see it and it makes me think like, all right, cool, I know this work's not gonna be in vain. Yeah. And I know it's gonna click. I just have to keep going. That's it. Once I keep going, you know, eventually we're gonna land. You know what I'm saying? So Love that man. And I think that a lot of your you've got a lot of strategy in what you do, I think. And you mentioned about you not having that many followers and people are saying that they haven't monetized and they got near mil near a million. And these things might have come from the days that you were in the hair salon where yeah. you had to make it work. Do you get what I'm trying to say? Yeah, yeah, and yeah. sometimes it's, it, 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 that, that translates into you positioning yourself from early when you first made your page. Mm. You made sure you did a funny thing where you made sure you're still brandable, mm. um, like you say. So a lot of these things can come from that. Mm, that's so but, funny, you know, because I would never think I had strategy, but you're right, actually. You do have Low strategy. Key. I think it's in my subconscious. No, nah, there's a lot of things I mean? that you've said today that I know that you have strategy. That's crazy because I like I'll be like you, I just. I go you said vibes. you worked in a receptionist as a receptionist yeah. at in Knightsbridge yeah, while you owned two yeah. branches of a salon. If yeah. that's not strategy, what is? It's but, vibes. Do you know what I mean? I feel like <laughs> I just operate. Like honestly, like I genuinely feel like I just I'm like a very especially when I was younger, very like impulse driven. You know what I'm saying? And like with the salon, sometimes it worked. And then as I've gotten older, it started to not work as much. So I feel mm. like there's an element of not really trusting that anymore. So I would feel like I need someone to give me a strategy, like so I can mm. follow the strategy that you're giving to me. So when I'm when you're saying it, I'm like, I don't see myself as I just feel like I just go with I go with my feeling and I'm like, all right, cool. I'm I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do that. But you're right, subconsciously, I think somewhere I think you just lost them. you're very intentional I need to bring if, it forward even with what you said about the podcast that Rita was saying off camera that she before she launched her podcast she was listening to loads of podcasts the best ones seeing what did well because there's mm -hmm. a there's a common um, thread through all of them yeah and make sure she implemented them in her so yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's amazing yeah. one thing we always say Rita when we when we wrap up as we're coming to the end is mm -hmm. that we want to get the W and the L of your journey so the, the cream and the crust if you will mm. so can you give us a huge W that you've had in your in your career or in or even in life and then an L as well. Hmm. Do people answer this quickly usually? Kinda. Kinda. <laughs> they would have answered by now. Oh, they would have said something. <laughs> 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 they they would have said something. They said something by now. But it's all right. No pressure. We're no pressure. No pressure. <laughs> we're, we're here. To, we're here waiting. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> a big L and a big W or a big W a big Ah oh, God. Doesn't have to be career, it can be just life as well. L can be lesson as well. Do you know what? I think a big lesson for me has been when you move, God moves. That's how I see it. Like, I think you can literally be stuck in your room saying, I'm writing a plan. I've got this idea. I need to beef it out. Oh, I need to do research. And for me, like, research is just another form of procrastination. Like, you can be writing forever. Like, even when it comes to the podcast, it was very much, I've got this idea, I want to do a podcast, I want to do a podcast, I want to do a podcast. But one thing I was, I thought to myself was like, I'm never going to know what this is until I start. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And you have to be afraid, not afraid, <laughs> please don't be afraid. You have to be brave enough to just start and start without you really fully knowing what it's going to be. Because the exciting thing is the more you do it, the more it's gonna become what you want it to be. So when I started the podcast, I intentionally started with my friends mm. so that I can beef it up yeah. and play around with it. See what works, see what doesn't, see if the jokes land, see if it doesn't, see if the sarcasm lands or it doesn't. Do you know what I mean? Because I know that the first one, as much as you want it to be the best, it's never gonna be the best per se because you're gonna look back 10 episodes later and be like, oh, that was, that was hella shit. Do you know what I mean? So I would say my biggest lesson has just been moving. Do you know what I mean? And just taking that action yeah. because for a long time I was very dormant. Like I had it in me that I wanted to do something, but I was like afraid mixed with waiting for the perfect moment. And I guess the lesson is there's never going to be a perfect moment. Absolutely. It's never going to feel perfect. You're always going to feel a bit anxious about it, but you just have to start. And once you start and once you move, I just feel like God just meets you there. Do you know what I mean? And everything you need is on the other side of that move that you need to make. Do you know what I mean? So that's my biggest lesson. Um, my biggest win, you know, it doesn't feel like I've had a lot of wins recently, but no, okay. My biggest win has been, wow. Guys, it doesn't I have to be your biggest, just a, 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 a win. win. It could be like an exciting campaign that you worked on. You do very cool stuff, I swear. You even talk about brand trips. Me, I've never been on a brand trip. <laughs> 
You, you, you wasn't a brand trip in the place that I paid like thousands of pounds for. No, the I paid. Yeah, okay, okay, cool. cool yeah, cool, cool, I just cool. went. You was angry. <laughs> you made yeah. it for better now. Yeah, no, 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 like no. He'd be, he be, he be thinking that I can't believe I paid for something and <laughs> no, somebody else got the same makeup, thing for free. It was a makeup brand trip. Don't use makeup, you man. Uh, would I even no, would I you, qualify? You are that type of person. I'm not at all. Well, what That's crazy. Well, cans? No, 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 not can. I paid for can. You know, Yeah, I paid for can, but what are you talking about? I'm talking about Ghana. Oh, that was by accident as well, actually. There you that go. wasn't so, a pantry. Oh, no, I didn't pay for the hotel, though. Okay, so is that a W? No, you trying to fish for a W? No, you must be thinking no, that. No, 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 that, wasn't, that was just, the, that was vibes. Do you know what I mean? I was in Nigeria. My friend was there. I said, ah, let's shy all. Let's, let's go in it. Like, no. Okay, I don't know why I'm finding it really hard to find a win. That's a bit ridiculous. And I will journal about it later. But I think, <laughs> <laughs> I think maybe the win, I'm just going to go with the podcast. I think that's a win because... Obviously, it's my baby. I was scared to start, but it's it's growing and I've been consistent with it and I'm proud of myself for that. Do you know what I mean? 36 episodes when I've had days where I really wanted to just pack it up and just like not do it and not be in the mood. But the fact that like even days when I weren't in the mood or my guests cancelled on the day or like an hour before, like I was still able to show up for myself. So I think... Mm. The win for me this year has been me showing up for myself, me like believing in myself and me like validating myself as opposed to constantly waiting for like people to validate me before I can do something. So I guess that's a win because it's like, it's growth in it. That's lit, man. It's yeah. proper. 36 yeah. here's to 3,600, right? Oh, come on, man, consistency. Yeah. <laughs> that number sounded so it's scary. A, yeah, it's a lot, man. It <laughs> sounded lot. really scary. <laughs> no, I'm... Listen, just hearing your story, I think it's is really inspirational. Like, Thank you. just even the fact that, like you said, sometimes there's a pressure. You you inherited like a family business. Mm -hmm. You took it on. You could have taken your identity from that. You realized it wasn't right for you, and you moved on from that and believed in yourself. Mm -hmm. And here you are today. Like, there are literally young people that are looking to want to be you. Even though for you, you feel like, you, and I always say, it's, it's perspective is everything. Like, yeah, yeah. you're struggling to find the win. There are people that are at home and they'd be like, I wish I could be more like Rita. Oh, that's good. Cool, like, yeah. do you understand? Yeah, and yeah. You, might not, you might not feel that, but trust me, there are people that are looking at their lives and they're inspired and they're like, I, I, relate, I relate to Rita, so if she can do it, I can do it. Yeah. And like, you're literally inspiring people to say, like, go on your journey. You can do this. You can, you can reinvent yourself. Mm -hmm. You can feel like an underdog and do it anyway. You can, like, you know, feel the fear, but still go ahead. Mm -hmm. You don't need to be perfect. I don't mm -hmm. feel like I'm perfect. Yeah. I still feel like I'm learning, mm -hmm. but I'm still here doing it. Yeah, and yeah. it's like, those are, that's inspirational. Thank that's, you. That's inspirational to so many. So, Thank like, you, you should be so you. proud of yourself. Thank you. That's so, that's so nice. Thanks. I need to have that as a ringtone, you know? Just to, <laughs> you know the days you're feeling low. You just have to be reminded. No one's got a ringtone nowadays, isn't it? I know, yeah. bring my yeah. ringtone. My thing's on oh, silent. Yeah, yeah, just vibrate. Yeah, just vibrate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but thank you. I really appreciate I do appreciate that, yeah. it's You just don't think about your journey, innit? I think yeah. that's why I guess this is good space. It's therapy, innit? Yeah, you're talking it out. You're like, oh, I did this, I did that. That's crazy. I got, I got strategy. Yeah. <laughs> Wow. Uh, uh, Rita, let the people know where they can find you, man. Uh, you can know. find me on Ms. Rita B. Where do I look? I have been looking nowhere this whole time. Just straight, do I have just a camera? What? Okay. Is this camera on me? Is this camera on me? <laughs> um, yeah, you can find me on Ms. Rita B, on TikTok, IG, YouTube. It's Ms. Rita B, but fake in adulthood. Check it out. Thank you. Come on, come on. Thank you for joining us. Thank guys. you for having Hope me. That was fun. Hope you enjoyed that episode. Um, we've loved having the Miss Rhea B on the on the podcast. Let us know who you want us to bring on next. And yeah, make sure you like, share, subscribe, and follow on IG. Yo, and we'll see you on the next one. Peace.